Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown program with Krishna under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill. Today we are reading and discussing the most beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Let's start off. We have seven o'clock. Ben Prabhuji, you want to give us a bit of your beautiful Midangam Kirtan? Damir, your mic is on. Uh, I don't know about beautiful Midangam Kirtan, but I'll try that. You would say some, that, isn't it? I'll maybe try to give some kind of Kirtan. <laughs> <laughs> I find it beautiful. Oh, well. But you just humble her. So the microphone is all yours, Ben. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Krishna prestaya bhutare Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Te Namine Namaste Sarvati Deve Goravanti <coughs> Goravani prachari Nirvisesha zunyavadi Paskachade satari ne Jai deve Goravani prachari Nirvesesha sunyavadi Paskacha de Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya <coughs> Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Hari Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 
Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, 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 Krishna, Hari, Krishna, 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 Hari, Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Hari Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hari Hari Nitai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gora Hari Jaya Nitai Sachi Sundara, Nitai Sachi Sundara, Nitai Sachi Sundara, Nitai Sachi Sundara, Jaya Giri Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Jaya Giri Govardhan, Jaya Giri 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 Govardhan, Giri Govardhan, Jaya Giri. Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Shira Prabhupada, Jaya Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva, Guru Deva. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Ben. Hare Krishna. Get it down very powerful tonight. Very powerful voice. Thank you, Rashmi. Hare Krishna. Welcome, Rashmi. Welcome, Dan. Welcome, Ben. And welcome, Samir. Hare Krishna. We, today we have the 3rd of February 
21 already and uh, we will have our beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. So first of all, to start off, now even before we start off, uh, I have been struggling for some time with a Skype, with a Kirtan, with a Harmonium. You may have realized that, and sometimes I didn't do Kirtan. And whenever we did Kirtan, then uh, it started well, and then uh, after a few minutes, five minutes latest, the level dropped her to half and even less, and it be just became horrible. So I thought it was my software, it was my microphone, it was a software with a microphone, and tried everything until I find out, found out it's actually Skype. Skype, in the newer versions, has uh, an invisible um, noise, background noise filter. So, say, which is a good thing in itself. It's a background noise and they're filtering out any background noise with the algorithm automatically. But when you want to do music, uh, the guitar is okay. But the harmonium with a constant drone, the, that software is taking it as noise reduction and say reducing it after a few minutes into the kirtan and it becomes impossible to play the harmonium, uh, taking it as a noise or reducing that and then reducing the whole kirtan and everything. So it doesn't work anymore. Uh, Zoom has also a noise suppression software, but with Zoom you can switch it off. Zoom is a more professional, it's a more better quality and a more private program. I think some of you, I think Rashmi and Samir, you have used Zoom before. So why I'm saying that? We want to switch over to Zoom. It's also more private. We have seen here on Skype, it's, it's all open to the internet. All kinds of strange people popping in and popping out. And there was one chap who put, uh, persistently put some advertisement <coughs> on it. And then uh, Deepesh got quite uh, upset with him. Ben, yes, go ahead. Oh, there's, a, there's another one you can use, is uh, called uh, Blue Jeans. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. No, I haven't. It's like Zoom. I've had meetings on Blue Jeans. It's oh, very it? good. I find it very good. It's called Blue Jeans. So it depends what they're doing with the noise filtering. If you can switch it on, you can switch it off. I found, the bot uh, um, I looked and I googled also Skype at present that don't offer a, a, a manual switch for noise filtering off on. Zoom, um, not very hidden, you can, uh, because Zoom is also used for musicians and all of that. If any musician uh, wants to use Skype, uh, he's going to be disappointed uh, because of that noise filtering and Zoom has that switch. Now, if Blue Jeans has that switch, that needs to be looked into. But uh, Ben, have you used Zoom before? Hi. Welcome, Jayanti Bhai, Hare Krishna. Hi. I've never used Zoom. I've never used Zoom, but I, 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 I did. Uh, I downloaded it, so I've got it. Yes, it is just free as well, and uh, it is private because it actually works in slightly different way. It's not a permanent link. Um, I would have to post out in in WhatsApp. Uh, on, on the group where everybody, or I make a group where everybody is on, of um, our regular uh, devotees, and I post the link uh, the same day, by midday perhaps. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, isn't, uh, isn't Zoom uh, free only for something like one hour or something? No. Zoom and then it logs you, it lo then it, after that it logs you out, something like that. Zoom uh, accommodates one-to-one, -one, up to 100 people, unlimited time, 
more than two people, uh, there's a limit for 40 minutes. But uh, if you buy the Zoom business uh, reasonable, uh, then with Zoom business, you can up to 100 people unlimited time. And that's what we're looking at. Samir. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, yeah. I had the same thing that after a certain time you have to pay for it, but if you're, if you're saying that if you get Zoom business, then it's fine, is it? Yes. Okay. It gives you up to 100 people and unlimited uh, 30 hours in one go, something like that. Oh, we don't need that. 30 hour meeting. <laughs> so Does, yes, that will be fine. Do you have to get Zoom business or is it just one no, person? No, no, no. It's just for me. Everybody uh, else gets a free Zoom up. And I uh, want you to, you have the Zoom up, Samir? Um, I, I have it on um, on my mom's phone, but I need to put it on this phone, this one, yeah. Yes, you can have it on the phone, you can have it on the laptop. I think everybody here present is on the phone, I think so. Ben? No, I just wanted to uh, send you that uh, that uh, a picture of that blue jeans. Uh, so if you wanted, if you were interested and you wanted to check it out, yes, I have a look. Okay. Thank you so much. So, but if that is uh, not of any, well, we look at it. But Rashmi, you want to say something? Uh, Zoom is on. Uh, you can have it on everything, Prabhuji, because uh, the uh, the the other classes which I attend with Siddhi Lal Samataji, they are on on they are all on Zoom. Yes. So I have it on my laptop. Uh, and you, and you are I familiar. Have... You are familiar with Zoom. It's very there's straightforward. Nothing to, there's nothing to do. She just sends us a link every morning of yes. the class, and we press on the link, and, and then, then straight you away enter. you enter into the class. Yes. Beautiful. Yes, it is very private. It is very secure. And I think that's where we going. I thought of that before, but uh, uh, Skype was okay until I realized uh, uh, several issues, the privacy and uh, background noise filtering. It makes it. And the Zoom layout is much more clearer also. Very clear. You have everybody on little squares on the screen and you here in Skype I have to I have a strange view to see everybody and have to scroll up and down and uh, not so nice. Okay, so I would request you all to download Zoom for next for this Saturday and we give it a try. While still in Skype, I will post a link in Skype and we'll give it a try how you like it and how it works just for five minutes or something. So if you can, in the meantime, uh, download the Zoom up. Have a look at it. It's, it's very straightforward, like Skype. You just click the link, uh, but you have to register. Like Skype, also you register with a picture. Please have a picture. Darm, Jayantipai, have a picture. So. Um, you don't need to turn off your, on your camera, just a microphone, but at least have a picture. You have these squares with beautiful pictures all over the screen. The whole screen will be filled up with squares, with pictures. It doesn't have to be a picture of yourself if you feel self-conscious. It can be a picture of Krishna or Radharani or whichever you is your favorite Hare Krishna picture. Okay, that's that. We look into that. Just for Saturday, download Zoom, as many of you as you can. Subscribe to it. Not subscribe, just uh, uh, set it up with your profile and a picture. And then we'll see on Saturday after the program how, how it works. Okay. Now, next, I have a beautiful Srila Prabhupada quote. We spoke about that before, but here it is again. Srila Prabhupada says, One day, Prabhupada asked me, a devotee is speaking, 
one day Prabhupada asked me, why did I write all of all these books? I said, so that we can learn the philosophy. He said, no. These books are said to convince you to chant Hare Krishna. If you are convinced, there is no need to read these books. <laughs> I thought that was just absolutely amazing. <laughs> to convince us to chant Hare Krishna. Okay. Let's go to our Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we're looking at the first canto. Fifth chapter, text 11. And it is in the chat. Here yeah, it is in the chat for everyone. 1 5 11. Am Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Am Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Am Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 5th Chapter, Text 11. Tadvak Vishargo Chanataga Viplavo Yasmin Pratishlokam Abadhavadyapi Naman Anantasya Yashon Kitaniyat Srivanti Gayanti Krinanti Sadhava Translation this was a difficult verse, actually. I had to practice this at least for 10 minutes. Quite difficult. Translation. On the other hand, that literature, which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, pastimes, etc., of the unlimited Supreme Lord, is a different creation, full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental literatures, even so imperfectly composed, are heard, sung and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. So in order to understand that translation, on the other hand, that literature which is full of description, we have to just I will just read that translation of the previous verse, which connects again, which we have done last time. Translation. Those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a place of pilgrimage for crows. Since all perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. So that connects on the other hand, yes. So, purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. It is a qualification of the great thinkers to pick up the best even from the verse. It is said that the intelligent man should pick up nectar from a stock of poison, should accept gold even from a filthy place, should accept a good and qualified wife even from an obscure family, and should accept a good lesson even from a man or from a teacher who comes from the untouchables. These are some of the ethical instructions for everyone in every place without exception. But the saint is far above the level of an ordinary man. He is always absorbed in glorifying the Supreme Lord because by broadcasting the holy name and fame of the Supreme Lord, the polluted atmosphere of the world will change. And as a result of propagating the transcendent liturgies like Srimad Bhagavatam, people will become sane in their transactions. While preparing this commentation on this particular stanza of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have a crisis before us. Our neighboring friend China has attacked the border of India with a militaristic spirit. 
We have practically no business in the political field, yet we see that previously they were both China and India, and they both lived peacefully for centuries without ill feelings. The reason is that they lived those days in an atmosphere of God consciousness, and every country over the surface of the world was God-fearing, pure-hearted and simple, and there was no question of political diplomacy. There is no cause of coercion between the two countries, China and India, over land which is not very suitable for habitation. And certainly there is no cause for fighting on this issue. But due to the age of quarrel, Kali, which we have discussed, there is always a chance of quarrel on slight provocation. This is due to the issue in question. But to the polluted, this is due not to the issue in question, but to the polluted atmosphere of this age. Systematically, there is propaganda by a section of people to stop glorification of the name and fame of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, there is great need for disseminating the message of Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world. It is the duty of every responsible Indian to broadcast the transcendental message of Srimad Bhagavatam throughout the world to do all the supermost good as well as to bring about the desired peace in the world. Because India has failed in her duty by neglecting this responsible work, there is so much quarrel and trouble all over the world. We are confident that if the transcendental message of Srimad Bhagavatam is received only by the leading men of the world, certainly there will be a change of heart. And naturally the people in general will follow them. The mass of people in general are tools in the hand of the modern politicians and leaders of the people. If there is a change of heart of the leaders only, certainly there will be a radical change in the atmosphere of the world. We know that our honest attempt to present these great literatures conveying the transcendental messages or receiving the God consciousness or reviving the God consciousness of the people in general and re-spiritualizing the world atmosphere is fraught with many difficulties. Our presenting this matter in adequate language, especially a foreign language, will certainly fail and there will be so many literary discrepancies despite our honest attempt to present it in the proper way. But we are sure that with all our faults in this connection, the seriousness of the subject matter will be taken into consideration. And the leaders of society will still accept this due to its being an honest attempt to glorify the Almighty God. When there is fire in a house, the inmates of the house go out to get help from the neighbors, who may be foreigners. And yet, without knowing the language, the victims of the fire express themselves, and the neighbors understand the need, even though not expressed in the same language. The same spirit of cooperation is needed to broadcast this transcendental message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, throughout the polluted atmosphere of the world. After all, it is a technical science of spiritual values, and thus we are concerned with the techniques and not with the language. If the techniques of this great literature are understood by the people of the world, there will be success. When there are too many materialistic activities by the people in general all over the world, there is no wonder that a person or a nation attacks another person or nation on slight provocation. But that, that is a rule of this age of Kali or quarrel. The atmosphere is already polluted with corruption of all description and everyone knows it well. There are so many unwanted literatures full of materialistic ideas of sense gratification. In many countries, there are bodies appointed by the state to detect and censor obscene literature. 
This means that neither the government nor the responsible leaders of the public want such literatures. Yet it is in the marketplace because the people want it for sense gratification. The people in general want to read. That is natural, a natural instinct. But because their minds are polluted, they want such literatures. Under the circumstances, transcendental literatures like Srimad Bhagavatam will not only diminish the activities of the corrupt mind of the people in general, but also it will supply food for the hankering after reading some interesting literature. In the beginning, they may not like it because one suffering from jaundice is reluctant to take sugar candy. But we should know that sugar candy is the only remedy for jaundice. Similarly, let there be systematic propaganda for, the popular, for popularizing reading of the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, which will act like sugar candy for the jaundice-like condition of sense gratification. When men have a taste for this literature, the other literature which are literatures which are catering poison to society will then automatically cease. We are sure, therefore, is that everyone in human society will become will welcome Srimad Bhagavatam, even so it is now presented with so many faults. Or it is recommended by Sri Narada, who has very kindly appeared in this chapter. Hare Krishna, that was a long purpose. Hare Krishna, what a beautiful verse. And Srila Prabhupada picks up uh, the political situation as well. Hare Krishna. So, any questions or comments on this verse or the purport? Anyone? Say something or ask something? Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, go ahead. Prabhupada, do you think you could summarize it for us? Yeah, summarize it. <laughs> That's a, well, okay, what are the main points? This Srimad Bhagavatam, there is so much. Kali Yuga is progressing in such a really strong, strong way. Quite interesting, Srila Prabhupada says, previously, due to God consciousness in India, in particular from India, uh, there was a peaceful situation. There is no reason for India and China going uh, into, into fighting with each other over a piece of land which is not very important. So it is not due to some dispute, border dispute, it is due to the influence of the age of quarrel. That is Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. And as Srila Prabhupada points out, even on a slight provocation, people start to fight. Why? Because people, there is a lack of God consciousness in the widest sense. Not necessarily in a, in a very uh, limited sense. In the widest sense, there is, God has been banned from everywhere. If you go on social media, for instance, uh, uh, people put in their profiles uh, atheist, for instance, not religious. People don't, Westerners, Westerners I'm speaking of, they don't want to have any association with God, with religion, even spirituality. They hear spirituality, they immediately uh, associated with religion. Not all, but most. I had so many discussions. So, by propagating Srimad Bhagavatam, even so, there may be so many imperfections. 
but an honest attempt. Srila Prabhupada underlines an honest attempt to present God consciousness. People will recognize that. I just thought today, time will come when the whole world will become Krishna conscious. Not necessarily the whole world will join ISKCON society. No, it doesn't work like that. They will stay within their own religion, which is okay, but they will become the, the element of bhakti will grow. Millions of books are out there in society all over the world. And people are reading those books. They are not connected to the Hare Krishna movement. Or Like when I received first Bhagavad Gita, I was not connected to the Hare Krishna temple uh, in, in Schloss Rathaus in Germany. For, for some years I was not connected. It was just a book. I was connected to Srila Prabhupada in the pages of the book. So there are millions of people who read these transcendental literatures. They're out there, millions in all languages. And uh, the time will come when the paradigm, the consciousness of the people will change. Only a critical mass of a few percent of people throughout the world taking up this message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, the whole world situation will change. And that's predicted. We are at the beginning of the golden age. The beginning is only the beginning. 500 years into the golden age. 500 years out of 10,000 years. That is very, very, very beginning. So, people will take up this message and uh, it will cause a change of heart. So, here in our Srimad Bhagavatam reading, we also come to the chapter, a change of heart. That's all what is needed, a change of heart. So, that hard-hearted heart of hate and quarrel and that will disappear and make place for the beautiful message of the Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada makes a strong point. If that Bhagavatam is propagated, if that message is propagated throughout the world, it will change the, the rotten atmosphere of this age of quarrel and hypocrisy. In particular, Srila Prabhupada had great hope that the political leaders will take up that message of the Bhagavatam. It doesn't look like today that the political leaders will are influenced, but that is not to say the time is running out for those political leaders who are causing so many destruction. Now in America, uh, a most destructive president has been uh, kicked out of office uh, and hopefully uh, a better course can be uh, steered. And of course, there are many things in the world will happen now with COVID and uh, the climate is and the uh, diversity and uh, biodiversity in the world and all of that is just crumbling and crumbling and crumbling. So that on one side, material nature is fighting back and karma is taking place on a mass scale. That will do something on one side, and on the other side there is the propaganda of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, theistic propaganda. So, this world will change from outside and from inside. And after all, Krishna is in the heart of all living entities. Uh, he can affect the change immediately, at any time a change of heart. And if the people have a change of heart, they will also demand leaders uh, in that same type of consciousness. So that is the basic message of this shloka, which Srila Prabhupada really in great detail and in great uh, 
compassionate for the world. He calls it an incredulity. He calls it a humble attempt. It's more than an attempt. It's a, absolutely a, a revolution. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Samir. Thank you, Prabhu. That was very nice. Thank you very much. Questions, questions. Questions are a sign of intelligence. Ben. Uh, yes. Well, I had a question about... Um, uh, it says like the propaganda and popularizing um, reading of Gita and the Bhagavatam. Uh, is a kind of cure for the jaundice-like condition of sense gratification. Um, so it's kind of it it uh, it puts down other literature in a sense. Um, yes. So, uh, my question is that, but we need the other uh, knowledge and information and literature uh, to function. Because isn't it true that as well as having spiritual knowledge, you have to have a material knowledge as well? Okay. I think we have to distinguish of... Uh, mathematics and physics and chemistry and technology and all that knowledge. That's one thing. And that is kind of neutral in a sense. And other, li other literature, which is uh, purely for relaxation and sense gratification and science fiction and what to speak of uh, novels and pornography and all of that. This is all commonplace on the internet, in books, in magazines, uh, which is, I'm sure everybody would agree, absolutely detrimental and useless. So this literature, which is not glorifying the Lord, that is absolutely useless. I got here a very nice, uh, sometimes we think Srila Prabhupada is against science. That's actually not the fact. Srila Prabhupada is not against science. Srila Prabhupada is against scientists who are denying God. So there was a conversation and Srila Prabhupada, a uh, devotee, uh, spoke about scientists and, uh, or Srila Prabhupada spoke with some guest was there and spoke about these rascal scientists and, and so on and so on. As we have heard so many times in Srila Prabhupada's books. And then that man said, but, but what about Albert Einstein? And Srila Prabhupada immediately showed back, that is different. He believed in God. So we have no problem with scientists uh, who understand or at least uh, accept the Supreme Being in whichever way. And that comes in quite interestingly. I just came across today uh, a quote from Albert Einstein. But on the other hand, Einstein says, everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man and one in the face of which we with our modest powers must feel humble. I mean, that is, Einstein believed in a superior uh, consciousness, in a superior arrangement, in higher intelligence. Uh, uh, God, uh, perhaps a bit in the impersonal way, but he is a scientist who, I mean, this quote says everything. But there are the scientists who are completely denying the existence of anything superior to themselves. So this is not helpful, but uh, knowledge about technology and mathematics and chemistry and physics, 
and geography and all that that is a difference that is kind of neutral does it answer your question yes okay this knowledge of course we need and rashmi need to have studied medicine otherwise she couldn't do her job like that is but it doesn't mean we have to read novels sir, which are only there to satisfy the mind and the senses any other question anybody now before we move on to the next shloka i would like to pick up a few points what we did last week no you know we why spoke. you know why i i asked that question please explain yeah because um it's like if um i mean would you say that all knowledge and information is in uh, is in the Puranas? Because, like, say you wanted to learn about, uh, say, for instance, like astronomy, you wanted to learn about the stars and planets and things like that. So I'm kind of talking about uh, um, maybe like psychological information as well. Uh, there has to be somewhere that you can access that 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 kind of information, because I mean, the, or would you say that um, the Paras and the, the the Vedas and the spiritual literatures that we read that every all information, all knowledge, and everything is in there how to live and you know. Um, uh, all kind of information is there. Good question. Not all knowledge, what you, it's in the Puranas. In the Vedas, yes. The Vedas, sometimes we think the Vedas, or people think the Vedas is something to do with India. No. That's the origin. The origin of the universe. It, just because Sadhus and sages in India have studied the Vedas. No, the Vedas, every knowledge here in the West and all around the world, every knowledge of every sphere is originated in the Vedas. And then it got expanded and expanded, and the expansion have expanded. We just heard from the previous verses how the Vedas, the four Vedas have been divided, and then they have been divided again and divided, and the knowledge is expanding. But actually, because, I mean, everything comes from Krishna. That is the first premise we have to accept. God is the origin of everything. So God is the origin of the Vedas. So the Vedas are the origin of all the knowledge. Material knowledge, spiritual knowledge, psychological knowledge, all of it. It may be difficult. It would be a worthwhile endeavor to trace back, take a particular type of knowledge, psychology or whatever, trace back its origin it will be very difficult task to get back and you will find it coming down to the vedas no doubt so yes the vedas are the origin of all knowledge in this world does it answer your question samir yes samir yes hi krishna um Hare Krishna, everybody. Dhanavat Pranams to everyone. Um, you know, I, on that note, I was listening to a class the other day, and uh, they were saying that there was a child who was homeschooled, and um, they were mainly mainly uh, teaching uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam to this child. And he actually went to university at the age of 12, and... Uh, because he understood so much about um, how to analyze and how to actually look at things really in a, on a spiritual platform. Uh, when he went to university, they um, gave him something to do on uh, Shakespeare. And he actually got the top marks at the age of 12 um, for, for, for that, uh, uh, you know, article that he did on Shakespeare 
So I found it very uh, fascinating that, you know, when, uh, when we actually are putting the Lord first and we are doing um, the devotional service side and the spiritual side, then this material, the material platform becomes very easy to navigate through. Um, so I thought it was quite uh, significant on this subject. Um, yes. It's a very nice, very nice class that I listened to the other day. Beautiful story. Thank you so much, Samir. Yes, they are statements we have come across. If someone knows Krishna, he knows everything. Same thing. If someone is connected with Krishna, Krishna will reveal all the knowledge. He knows everything. It's not surprising that with the strength of Krishna consciousness, that young boy of 12 years eh, is, is performing extremely well. Because if one is educated and brought up in Krishna consciousness, he first of all knows how to control his senses, you know, sharpen his mind, uh, sharp intelligence, he, he got tools uh, which, which he can perform, uh, not like his peers who are addicted to various kinds of sinful activities, even at a young age, and who are distracted, who cannot focus their mind, who are distracted from social media and this and that and so many things. Uh. So if someone is trained in Krishna consciousness from a young age, and that's what Srila Prabhupada wanted with the Gurukula, then uh, he will outperform all others. And uh, an example comes to mind. Uh, my son Sundar Gopal, who has been speaking here, he has not gone to any particular uh, expensive school or this or that. He was just in in uh, in Rashimit in So Valley College, which is just an ordinary school in north of Leicester, Rashimit now. It was So Valley College at the time. And uh, not that he was gifted with special high intelligence. Yeah? But he was hardworking and he was focused in his mind. He got some basic training in the Gurukula in France, in Umayyapur. So already at GCSE level, he did 10, 10 GCSEs, which is quite, uh, normally people don't do that many, huh? a few. And he got an A in every single GCSE due to the backbone was his Krishna consciousness and his Krishna conscious training in the Gurukula. And then he was uh, suggested he should apply for Cambridge University. Now we know Cambridge, not everybody gets into Cambridge. That is uh, very special. That is uh, people who have contacts and Oxford and Cambridge, these are the top universities in this country. Huh? If you have connections, you can get in easily and all of our our prime ministers are coming from Eton and then so many political leaders and they have been in Cambridge or Oxford educated like that. So when he had his interview, that was striking, I remember that. I drove him there, I picked him up afterwards in Cambridge. He had his interview for admission and he told me the the panel of interviewees, they said, this boy, it, he appears like he's coming from a military background. <laughs> it was interesting. He's coming from a military background, far from that. Uh, but he was trained uh, in Krishna consciousness, uh, some trainings uh, in the Gurukula and uh, meaning regulated in his habits and so on and so on. So they picked up immediately. And he was, by then, spent a year in India, and he was traveled, and, and they liked that. They liked that a bit. Uh, his peers uh, have never left England uh, once. Uh, 
many, not all. So then he got into Cambridge and he, he did a law degree there. Huh? And just see someone who is trained from small childhood on in Krishna consciousness and not trained. Uh, just the parents expect, I have seen that also in particular Indian families, they want the child to be Krishna conscious, but themselves they don't give the example. And I have to tell them again and again, it will not work. If the, if you want your child to be Krishna conscious and spiritual, and you give, you don't give the example, the child will not go further than you. But if the parents give the example, and trains a child in Krishna Gandhi, then then will be success. Of course. So, yes, that is not that amazing of that 12-year-old boy, Hare Krishna. Anything else? Okay, before we go further, I would like to pick up what we discussed last week. I have some quotes here, way too many, and I will just about Guru. First of all, before we come to that, we spoke about the Ashta cities. Ashta cities, the eight yogic cities. So here Srila Prabhupada writes, uh, Bukti means karmis. They want sense gratification. And we hear sometimes Bukti Mukti. Bukti means fruitive workers. Wherever they, whatever they do, the center is sense gratification. Therefore, they are bhukti karmis, boga, material enjoyment. This is called karmis. They perform big, big sacrifices, but the goal is how I shall be elevated to the heavenly planet, Svarga Loka, and I shall enjoy there the Urvashis, nice woman, and the Nanda, Nanda, Nanda Kanana, nice gardens. Actually, the higher planetary systems, the standard of living is very, very high. Hundreds and thousands of times better than this planet. Living duration, duration of life is very great. So the bhukti, they are bhukti karmis, that is karma. Karma means, of course, lust. And when they are unable to satisfy the senses, by this material enjoyment, say a mukti karmi. So we have bukti karmi and now mukti karmi. That is also karma, void. So Buddha philosophy, mukti, vacant. Bukti, of course, not void. Same thing in a different name. Merge into the effulgence of Brahman and stop me, stop my individuality. That is also voidness, zero. I make myself zero. This is another explanation of nirvana, voidism. Finish everything. You are suffering from fever. All right, I cut your throat. So your fever is gone. You, you also gone, finished. This is called sunyavadi. Make everything zero. Why you are suffering from fever? The best means is that cut your throat and become happy. So, of course, we know when even the Brahma, Pranam Mantra, we saying to Srila Prabhupada, Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pracharana Nirvishesha Sunyavadi. Sunyavadi is the voidness. So, Bukti Mukti, that is also desire. Bukti Mukti and Siti. Now we come to the point. Siti. Siti Karmi. So we have Bukti Karmi, Mukti Karmi, and Siti Karmi. Still, all the all are karmis, sense in choice. So Siti Karmi, yogis, Ashtanga Yoga, and Ashta Siti. Ashta Siti. Anima, Lagima, Brabti, Siti, Ishita, Vashita, like that. Anima, Anu. You can become very small. Not these yogis, actually, so who are in personal yoga. They can become like that. Smaller than the smallest. Okay, a moment. Oh, microphone, please. Up again. 
Okay. Sort it. So, smaller than the smallest. So, anima, lagima, you can become lighter than the lightest. You can fly in the air. They go by touching the beam of the sun, moon, they can go. They are trying to go to the moon planet by artificial material weapons and so on and so on. Mahima, you can become very big, heavy. Mahima, just like Hanuman, he jumped over the ocean. That he means he assumed a big body so that one leg here and one leg there. He can jump. That is called Mahima City. Prapti, you can eat anything you like at any time. Prapti City. So many things. Sometimes they do not like the devotees because the devotees they cannot show this magic. They do not like that within four years, five years, the whole world should be chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That is not magic. But if he can jump over the river, that is magic. The other side of the magic, they have no eyes to see. So the yoga city, that is magic. But devotees can show better magic, but they do not bother their time for yoga practice. That is Bhakta. Because he is under the care of the Supreme Magician Krishna. So if there is need of magic, Krishna will show. Why he should bother? Just like a small child is dependent on his father. Father is a rich man. So he says to his father, Father, I want this. That is very costly. So he doesn't require to get the money. The father is there. He'll get the money. All right, take it. Okay, so that was just a little bit on the cities. Now, I want to pick out just something I cannot, we cannot uh, look at everything uh, regarding Libri rule. Rashmi? Prabhuji, uh, you know, all these siddhis and all that, don't you think all this so much, so much detail about all this thing, how is it going to help us in any way? So, it why are we spending so much time on? that we don't uh, aspire for yogic cities, that's all. I, I hope we don't. But uh, yes, that is important now. We spent uh, a little bit of time on... Uh, we spoke last time and Rashmi had said question about spiritual master and diksha and so on. So I just... a few of the quote. So Srila Prabhupada says, as far as my blessing is concerned, it does not require my physical presence. If you are chanting Hare Krishna there and follow my instructions, reading the books, taking only Krishna Prasadam, <coughs> etc., then there is no question of you not receiving the blessings of Lord Chaitanya, whose mission I am humbly trying to push on. That was in a letter of Srila Prabhupada. And also, in the Back to Godhead article, if you have understood the Krishna philosophy and if you have decided that you will take Krishna consciousness seriously and preach the philosophy to others, that is your initiation. So just see. That is your initiation. We spoke about the formal initiation, which is not very important. So, my touch is simply a formality. It is your determination that is initiation. So that's from back to Godhead. And here one more, Srila Prabhupada speaking. Sometimes a Diksha Guru is not always present. Therefore one can take learning instruction from an advanced devotee. That is called the Shiksha Guru. Shikshuru does not mean he is speaking something against the teachings of the Diksha Guru. He is not a Shiksha Guru, he is a rascal. Just like Krishna can be present simultaneously in millions of places, similarly, the spiritual master also can be present wherever the disciple wants. A spiritual master is a principle 
not the body. So here we stop. Maybe at a later point we can have more. So let's go to the next shloka. Rashmi Mataji, you want to take text number 12. Number twelve Neshkam Nesh Neshkarmya Pyachut Pyachut Bhava Varjitam Nashobhate Gnanam Alam Niranjanam Kutapuna Shashwad Abhadram Ishware Nacharpitam Karma Yadapakaranka Yad apaka, apakaranam. Can you just say something? You huh. said again, Gnanam. We spoke so many. Gyanam. Sure. Gyanam. Gyanam. Yes, Gyanam. thank you. Yad ap, apakaranam. Translation. Knowledge of self-realization, even though free from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of a conception of a, of the infallible God. What then is the use of fruitive activities which are naturally painful from the very beginning and transient by nature if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord? As referred to above, not only ordinary literatures devoid of the transcendental glories glorification of the Lord are condemned, but also Vedic literatures and speculation on the subject of impersonal Brahman when they are devoid of no devotional service. When speculation on the impersonal Brahman is condemned on the above ground, then what to speak of ordinary fruitive work, which is not meant to fulfill the aim of devotional service. Such speculative knowledge and fruitive work cannot lead on to the goal of perfection. Fruitive work in which almost all people in general are engaged is always painful either in the beginning or at the end. It can be fruitful only when made subservient to the devotional service of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita also it is confirmed that the result of such fruitive work may be offered for the service of the Lord, otherwise it leads to material bondage. The bona fide enjoyer of the fruitive work is the personality of Godhead. And thus, when it is engaged for the sense gratification of the living beings, it becomes an acute source of trouble. Okay, thank you. You want to say a few words? There's lots of things in here. Uh, the main thing is in the tra in the translation. Um, Srila Vyasadeva is saying that even if even Sankhya Yoga, uh, when we study Sankhya Yoga and we realize the difference between the body and soul, um, even that, even just having knowledge of what is the difference between body and law? So just Sankhya philosophy is not good enough if Sankhya yoga does not lead on to Bhakti yoga and understanding of who Krishna is, what our relationship with Krishna. Uh, so when Vasudev is saying that when even Sankhya yoga without Bhakti can be, uh, can, is not good, is not good enough, then what can you speak about uh, karma, when you're talking about what is the use of such karma, where the fruits are not being offered, it's only when the karma is only used, being used for self, uh, for yourself, for selfish motives, for sense, your own sense, gratification, your own family, everything about yourself, and the fruits are not being offered to Krishna. So if it is not followed with bhakti, uh, bhakti yoga, then it is only going to lead to bondage and more suffering. So that is what the uh, translation is and the thing is trying to say, I've, I've, what I have understood. Yeah, thank you. Great. Very nicely expressed. If it doesn't lead to bhakti, it is actually useless. Bhakti means, of course, devotional service. 
it leads to material bondage. Here Srila Prabhupada says, the bond of fighting joya of the fruitive work is a personality of God. And thus, when it is engaged for sense gratification of the living being, it becomes an acute source of trouble. So, I, the other day I came across a very nice definition of the impersonal, even mukti, impersonal mukti, as an impersonalist, just, just thinking about liberation. Everything is in the mind, or even imagining themselves. And you touched on it with Sankhya Yoga. But just thinking about liberation or coming to the, even to the Brahma Buddha platform and just all, uh, there is a steadiness, an equilibrium there, of course. But then the devotees, they're not only thinking about liberation, they're acting in the liberated stage, which that acting is devotional service. Anyone, Rashmi? Yeah, and actually, you know, Prabhuji, that uh, I have realized this. I have, uh, I'm doing chapter two with my father, and it is Sankhya. It's basically knowledge of the soul, so Sankhya Yoga. Um, and it is even today we would see it is it is again and again Krishna is Krishna could have just said in one line that you are not this body you are this soul and finish the matter there and given maybe one more verse about about the soul and then but that whole chapter from maybe 2.16-17 it keeps on describing till the very end about the soul, about the soul, about the soul. Yet, at the end of it, you feel it is so difficult. If just that knowledge and that knowledge had stopped there, it would have been so difficult. Okay, what will we, what would we have done with that knowledge? Uh, that knowledge of Sankhya Yoga. Okay, I'm not this body, I'm this soul. But then Krishna went, uh, my father commented, this knowledge is is this seemingly simple knowledge is very hard because it's 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 easy to read it's easy to understand but to practice it is very hard so if it was not followed by bhakti then it, that same knowledge becomes so difficult i thought about what he said and actually what he said was correct if that knowledge ended there sankhya uh, about sankhya yoga and there was no bhakti then how do we how would we have practiced that knowledge, that Sankhya knowledge? Yes, it, it becomes have, useless. Yeah, it would have become really useless if Krishna had not followed it up with uh, the other yogas and finally Bhakti Yoga. Yes, that's a big difference of the devotees. They also have that knowledge, but they put it into action and that action is called devotional service. And everything short of devotional service, or as the previous verse says, anything which is not glorifying the Supreme Personality of God, it is absolutely useless. So, acting on that knowledge, devotional service, that is a topmost platform. Anyone else wants to say something? Yes, a very relevant point, Rashmi. Very relevant. And so, as it's just all knowledge, 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 for what purpose? Knowledge has a purpose. You act. But an impersonalist, how can he act? He has nothing to act. He has no, impersonalists don't accept devotional service. So there's no action there. It's just all thinking, thinking, thinking. And arguing and interpreting and speculating. And so that is not helpful. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on. Then, you want to take the next verse? 13. Mm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Ato Maha Bhaga Bhavanamo Gadrk. Shuchi Shrava Satcharato Trita Vrata Urukar Kra Karmas Yak 
Kila Bandha Muktaye Samadhini Nanusmara Nanusmara Tad Vise Vises Vises Titam Translation O oh, Vyasadev, your vision is completely perfect. Your good fame is spotless. You are firm in vow and situated in truthfulness. And thus you can think of the pastimes of the Lord in trance for the liberation of the people in general from all material bondage. Purport by the Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Excuse me. People in general have a taste for literatures by instinct. They want to hear and read from authorities, sometimes about the unknown. But their taste is exploited by unfortunate literatures, which are full of subject matter for satisfaction of the material senses. Such literatures contain different kinds of mundane poems and philosophical speculations, more or less under the influence of Maya, ending in sense gratification. These literatures, although worthless in the true sense of the term, are variously decorated to attract the attention of the less intelligent men. Thus, the attracted living entities are more and more entangled in material bondage without hope of liberation for thousands and thousands of generations. Sri Ranada Rishi, being the best among the Vaishnavas, is compassionate towards such unfortunate victims of worthless literatures, and thus he advises Sri Vyasadeva to compose transcendental literature, which is not only attractive, but can also actually bring liberation from all kinds of bondage. Sri Vyasadeva or his representatives are qualified because they are rightly trained to see things in true perspective. Sri Vyasadeva and his representatives are pure in thought due to their spiritual enlightenment, fixed in their vows due to their devotional service and determined to deliver the fallen souls rotting in material activities. The fallen souls are very eager to receive novel informations every day, and the transcendentalists like Vyasadeva or Narada can supply such eager people in general with unlimited news from the spiritual world. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the material world is only a part of the whole creation and that this earth is only a fragment of the whole material world. There are thousands and thousands of literary men all over the world and they have created many, many thousands of literary, literary works for the information of the people in general for thousands and thousands of years. Unfortunately, none of them have brought peace and tranquility on the earth. This is due to a spiritual vacuum in those literatures. Therefore, the Vedic literatures, especially Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, are specifically recommended to suffering humanity to bring about the desired effect of liberation from the pangs of material civilization, which is eating the vital part of human energy. The Bhagavad Gita is the spoken message of the Lord himself, recorded by Vyasadev, and the Srimad Bhagavatam is the transcendental narration of the activities of the same Lord Krishna which alone can satisfy the hankering desires 
of the living being for eternal peace and liberation from miseries. Srimad Bhagavatam, therefore, is meant for all kinds of beings all over the universe from total liberation from all kinds of material bondage. Such transcendental narrations of the pastimes of the Lord can be described only by liberated souls like Vyasadeva and his bona fide representatives who are completely merged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Only to such devotees do the pastimes of the Lord and their transcendental nature become automatically manifest by dint of devotional service. No one else can either know or describe the acts of the Lord, even if they speculate on the subject for many, many years. The descriptions of the Bhagavatam are so precise and accurate that whatever has been predicted in this great literature about 5,000 years ago is now exactly happening. Therefore, the vision of the offer comprehends past, present, and future. Such liberated persons as Vyasadev are perfect, not only by the power of vision and wisdom, but also in oral reception, in thinking, feeling, and all other sense activities. A liberated person possesses perfect senses, and with perfect senses only, can one serve the sense proprietor, Rishi Kesh, Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, therefore, is the perfect description of the all-perfect personality of Godhead by the all-perfect personality, Srila Vyasadev, the compiler of the Vedas. Yeah, long purport. <laughs> Well, it's not long. Previously, the first one was very long. Mm. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. So, can you say a few words? Well, um, uh, to summarize, uh, or try to summarize, uh, um, this is a uh, Describing the um, the qualities and the uh, the position, uh, the character, uh, the status of uh, Sri Vyasadeva, and uh, well, not just Sri Vyasadeva, but uh, the nature of the pure devotee. So, any devotee in the line could be, these uh, attributes could be attributed to them. So, um, again, it's like making the comparison, um, uh, mundane literature versus spiritual literature, and the futility and the, um, the almost... Uh, waste of time nature of this literature by comparison to the spiritual literature which is uh, uh, created to enlighten and awaken uh, conditioned souls who are who are um, who are constantly absorbed and uh, who are just in this illusion this my illusion and trapped in a sense but the spiritual uh, literature is is designed to uh, free them from this uh, from this uh, engagement in material uh, in material nature so Prabhupada is highlighting these uh, these points in this purport um, and this is the mercy and the compassion uh, of the pure devotee, um, Srila Vyasadeva, who is composing this literature um, to try to try to extricate the 
conditioned souls in this material nature back to their healthy, normal condition, i.e. to become engaged again uh, in the devotional service where, where they will be uh, truly happy and satisfied and fulfilled. Yay, Hare Krishna. Beautiful summary. Thank you very much. Any question, anybody? If not, we can do one more. Or are you at 8.30, you have to leave, anybody? Okay, then why not? Uh, uh, Samir, can you do us the next one? 14? 14, yeah. Tato, tato niyata kin, kin janayat vivaksate pra Pratag darsas tat krita rupa namabi na kar chit kwa api cha dusita matir rabeta vata hata no ivas ivas padam. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Kije. Whatever you desire, whatever you desire to describe that is separate and vision from the Lord simply reacts with different forms, names, results to agitate the mind as the wind agitates a boat which has no resting place. Sri Vastev is the editor of all descriptions of the Vedic literatures. And thus he has described transcendental realization in different ways, namely by fruitive activities, speculative knowledge, mystic power and devotional service. Besides that, in his various Puranas, he has recommended the worship of so many demigods in different forms and names. The result is that people in general are puzzled how to fix their minds in the service of the Lord. They are always disturbed about finding the real path of self-realization. Sri Rastev is stressing this particular defect in the Vedic literatures compiled by Vyastev, and thus he is trying to emphasize describing everything in relation with the Supreme Lord and no one else. In fact, there is nothing existent except the Lord. The Lord is manifested in different expansions. He is the root of all of the complete tree. He is the stomach of the complete body. Pouring water on the root is the right process to water the tree, as much as feeding the stomach supplies energy to all parts of the body. Therefore, Sri Lavayasthev should not have compiled any Puranas other than the Bhagavad Purana because a slight deviation from that may create havoc for self-realization. If a slight deviation can create such havoc, then what to speak of deliberate expansion of the ideas separate from the absolute truth, personality of Godhead. The most defective part of worshipping demigods is that it creates a definite conception of uh, of fantasism ending disastrously in many religious sects, detrimental to the progress of the principles of Bhagavatam, which alone can give the accurate direction for self-realization in eternal relationship, internal relation with the personality of God by devotional service in transcendental love. The example of the boat disturbed by wearing wind is suitable in this respect. The diverted mind of the Bhantias can never reach the perfection of self-realization due to the disturbed condition of the selection of object. Hare Krishna, thank you. Can you give say a few words? Yeah, so um, I think basically uh, what they're saying here is that 
um, the 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 mind can become quite agitated if um, the subject matter is not relating to Krishna. So it's saying that obviously, if we are serving Krishna, then everything else is served. So if we serve Krishna, then um, everybody else becomes uh, happy. They become satisfied. So all the demigods, um, everything is satisfied. Uh, our senses can be uh, satisfied. The mind is no longer agitated. And obviously it's giving the example of the wind that agitates the boat, which has then no resting place. So um, also giving the example of watering a tree. If you do the roots, then the whole tree is nourished. If you feed the stomach, then the whole body is nourished. Uh, and in the same way, they, um, if we are serving Krishna, then uh, everything in our life becomes nourished, and uh, we don't need to we don't need to do anything else really. We just um, we become content. We become the mind becomes uh, steady, and. Um, it reminded me of a really nice quote which the Christians use, which is, I'm restless until I rest in you. So I thought that was a very beautiful line. I heard it uh, a while ago, and it said, I'm restless until I rest in you. It's very, very nice. Um, so, yeah, that's basically, uh, in my view, that's what uh, is being said here. And also, it's saying that uh, the Bhagavatam should have been the only Purana. <laughs> uh, and I think, I think, I think, you know, in this, in this, uh, in this age, because obviously this Bhagavatam is written for us, Srimad Bhagavatam is written for for the Kali you know. And um, I think it's so true that if we just read the Bhagavatam. We don't really need to read anything else. Okay. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice summary, study. A question for you or anybody else. What is pantheism? The pantheist, what is that? Anyone? Samir? Rashmi? Ben? Huh? Rashana? Pantheism. I know this one. Go ahead. Well, it's like uh, it's like someone who believes in uh, many gods. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, that is quite the danger, because Vyasadeva has uh, uh, very much elaborated on worshipping the demigods. So people are confused. They're becoming pantheist. They, uh, they think there are many gods. Go, go to India. Rashmi, you can uh, acknowledge that. People think there are many gods. They're not used to the idea of a supreme personality of God. No, it is all the same. Many gods. Worship this demigod or this. They don't even say demigods, they say God. Is that true, Rashmi? In India, people are, through the demigod worship, say, taking the idea of many gods. Yes, Prabhu. In fact, they don't even will like it. It is so strong, that feeling, that they will not like if you will tell them that it's not Shiva, it is Krishna, or it is not Durga, it is Krishna. Nobody will... Tolerate that you telling them that. Yeah. So that comes. That was Philip Robert. He says Vyasadev shouldn't have done that. He should have just concentrated on the Bhagavatam. Anyway, that is done. Now it's up to us to uh, to popularize and to spread the message of the Bhagavatam, and we're doing that. 
all over the world what is doing that all over the world uh, more and more and uh, even india will get the idea i the other day uh, there was some talking about a seminar about vedic culture worldwide and there most most if not all the people are young indian men mainly and uh, Say Jai Shri Krishna and Hare Krishna, and they picked up. Uh, they're not devotees, as so far as I can see. Perhaps, maybe some, uh, such as young Indian men, but they have been strongly influenced by uh, devotional service, Krishna. And uh, so I thought that was quite significant to see the younger generation. In India, of course, there's a lot who going the Western way, but there's also others who trying to find the roots. Okay, any other question? Prabhuji, I'll make a comment. It is so funny. Uh, do you remember, your, everybody must remember that, that there was a boy, a man who came with me to the temple once. He was my school friend. Yes, I remember him very well. <laughs> you remember him? Uh, so, Prabhuji, uh, he is, uh, you know, Vaishnu Devi. Vaishnu Devi is, uh, she was a Vishnu Bhakt, but she was a, she's a goddess. Like she is a combination of Durga, Lakshmi and Saraswati. Okay. And uh, she's very like, very much worship. She's one of the uh, Vaishnu Devi Mata. She's one of the, uh, I don't know what whether to call her demigod, maybe a demigod, yeah. Uh, she's like Durga, very, very, her worship is very pr uh, pr popular. So he, he because I, I am Krishna Bhatt, he has stopped talking to me. <laughs> that is, the feelings can be so strong. So he talked about her to you? Is that no, what you no, said? no, 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 I'm saying because he is a Vaishnav Devi Bhakt and I'm a Krishna Bhakt. Okay. He has stopped talking to me. He does not talk to me. He does not uh, be friend. He's my <laughs> school friend. He does, he does not talk to me anymore. And the reason he gave me was because I say Hare Krishna and Jai Shri Krishna whenever, like, it's natural when I pick up the phone, it just comes out from my mouth. So because I say that, he's taken offense. So he says, uh, I'm trying to, uh, like, you know, I'm trying to put my faith over his. So... I'm not. I've never ever said anything to him to worship anybody. I don't talk yeah, about. Yeah. But yet he. It's so the feelings can run so, so strong. I'm just giving you my personal example. How uh, from childhood I have had his has him had him as my friend, and now he doesn't talk to me because of Krishna Bhakti. <laughs> amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Utterly amazing. Just me yeah, as he thinks to happen. Huh? Okay, great. <laughs> this is the age of Kali. This is what? Say again. This is the age of Kali. Quarrel yes. and hypocrisy. Yes, yes. Yes, Hare Krishna. Even saying Hare Krishna, one takes offense. you putting your faith over mine. You face my faith. There is only one faith. Hare Krishna. But people don't know. But we need to tell them. That is our mission. Somehow, by hook or by crook. Hare Krishna. Okay, I would like to invite Rashmi for five minutes of Kirtan. With someone or without, with Katans or without, whichever. You won't get away this time. Rashmi Mataji, go ahead, little bit of Kirtan. Even just hand clapping will do. No, it's all quiet now. <laughs> You're waiting until I ask Ben, isn't it? No, I'll do Nashim prayers, Prabhuji, but with Kartal, it will not be nice. I think you should ask Ben to do. No, it depended already. Okay, do Nishim prayers with Kartal. That's fine. Okay. Let's pray for all the lost souls in the world. You don't want Varshana Mataji to do Nashim prayers? No, no, Rashmi Prabhu, you can do It's been a long time, so you have to sing. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, Vashana. You don't, you don't give her a chance to get out of it. <laughs> Prabhuji, let me know if the kartal is... Uh... Keep the kartal away from the microphone as far as possible and play some very, very soft. Okay. That's fine, yes, like that. 
Thank you very much. Beautiful Kirtan. Next time the kata is even softer. It was okay, but even softer. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Prabhu, you have a question before you go away. Uh, uh, You know that book of some scars, I was, I tried to read about the funeral and all, all that funeral rites and everything. And then I thought, okay, this is, this is for people who are uh, who are not Vaishnavs, or if their family members are not Vaishnavs, uh, so maybe it is a purificatory process for that. But then I read something. So I, I, what I understood that all the ceremonies when somebody dies and the shrad ceremony when uh, every year annual shrad ceremony is a. Is a uh, uh, what's it a word? Maybe I don't know whether karma kanda is the word for it, but maybe it is one of those rituals. And then I real I heard that um, Narsingh Dev is uh, telling Prahlad Maharaj uh, after Hiranyakashipu is killed that do shrad do shrad ceremony for uh, your father. So I I was so conf- I'm so confused. So <laughs> so what? <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj is devotee, and if he why is and he is so pure devotee. So we have heard that seven generations in front of him and behind him and something like that will all be um, going back to Godhead. So why is then pra- Narsingh Dev telling Sh- Prahlad Maharaj to do uh, this uh, shrad ceremony and all this? Uh, ritual for his Hiranya Kashipu. Like this Nirshima praise has made me uh, uh, remember that I wanted to ask this question. Hare Krishna, yes. 
There are so many ceremonies. Uh, I can only say I do remember when I was at the, when, uh, the funeral at the house of uh, Hasmuk Hamzagati Krishna Das Prabhuji. Uh, we did Kirtan and then Dipagananda did uh, ceremony with prayers and incense and this and that and so many things. Uh, okay. But then at one point he said, can the kirtan a little bit more silently? So I thought that was not particular uh, the right thing to say. Huh? Uh, and I thought, and I said to Andadweep actually, when, uh, when you do my funeral, whenever that comes, uh, please, I just want kirtan and not all the other ceremonies just have kirtan so i put that on notice <laughs> everybody and i have a funeral ceremony just kirtan that is good enough of course it can do them. it's more or less to satisfy the people really there were most people want to see something uh, same uh, same thing what we talked uh, earlier on uh, with on last week with formal initiation. Uh, some people like that form. Uh, that is very important, more important than anything else, that external form and all of that. Uh, yes, it has its place, uh, but actually it is not that important. The actual essence is more important. And the essence of the funeral ceremony, the essence is chanting Hare Krishna. That is important, more important than any rituals. Why Nisinga Dev has asked Pralat Maharaj to the Shraddha ceremony, um, I don't know. I have to think about it. That was then. I don't know. Srila Prabhupada probably would say, Srila Prabhupada did say, uh, which is given an indication also, when we uh, devotees established Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan, right? Many, many, many years ago. That was the first temple in Ramanreti, and the first and the only temple, I still think so, in Vrindavan where Krishna and Balaram are worshipped. So he invited all of the dignitaries and all the Goswamis uh, and every all the important men of Vrindavan. Uh, uh, that was important because uh, then the Hare Krishna temple in Vrindavan, Krishna Balaram Mandir is, is accepted because there is a lot of social politics going on and this and this and that. So he invited all that and had all the ceremonies done and the, everything proper uh, and Sanskrit prayers and these rituals and that. Uh, and after everybody has left, Srila Prabhupada said, we did that to satisfy all the people, so they will accept the devotees in Vrindavan as bona fide and the temple bona fide. But actually, we could have done the whole thing just by chanting Hare Krishna. That would have been quite sufficient. So that's the same point. Even a funeral ceremony, just chant Hare Krishna. Establishing of Krishna Balaram Mandir or a temple, just chant Hare Krishna. But to satisfy the people, uh, the people expect some external science, uh, like always, uh, we are all, people are so much fixed on the externals uh, and forgetting the essence. And you just present the essence, uh, the feel that is missing something. They want to see the rituals. That's my take on that. Okay, here we stop. Thank you very much for the beautiful kirtan. And uh, I hope uh, Vashana Mataji, sorry you didn't get a chance of reading or anything. So a quick question. Food for Life was not today, was it? was Saturday. No, we did it on Saturday and it went well. Thank you. Okay. So we'll see you all on Saturday, all and more. And Pandava Prabhu will be there and Bhagavati Mataji and I hope Amit as well on Saturday, and please do download the Zoom app and we'll give it a try on Saturday afterwards. 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone.